Hello. My name is Ulki Farga and I am a data scientist. Today uh, we would be creating a hosting environment uh, using free space. Uh, a lot of us have been entering queries like how to create a free website uh, or how to get a free hosting space. So we've got a platform which provides us one year of free hosting uh, along with different bunch of things that uh, were never like this much cheap. So utilizing one year of free credit by Google, we would be creating a hosting environment for a WordPress website on Google Cloud Platform. Open a link as cloud.google.com, create a free account. Try Google Cloud Platform for free. Step one, like choosing your country and checking out the terms and conditions. So as I've read them all, I would go straight forward to the process, agree and continue. Enter our card credentials. I've entered all my card details. Start my free try. Welcome entrepreneur. See, they know that I am an entrepreneur. Thanks for signing up for the 12 month free trial. Uh, we've given you $300 in free trial credit to spend. If you run out of credit, don't worry, you won't be billed until you've given the permission. So don't hesitate that you, you, you are entering your card details and whenever your free trial would be ending or free credit would be ending and, and they would be directing the amount that you've, you've been charged for the upcoming period. So just don't hesitate, they don't do it like this. Our free, uh, free trial of... Uh, Dollar three hundred credit is created. So now uh, we have to create a compute engine environment for WordPress website. So for that, uh, on the search option, just write down WordPress. So here we have, we've got different options: uh, Plask WordPress Edition and XYZ, XYZ, XYZ. So the 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 installation the installation that we would be doing right now and that is the most preferable. It's Google Click to Deploy WordPress. Google Click to Deploy the best option. So launch on Compute Engine, enable billing. I've entered billing details. Configuring APIs. This may take few minutes. The deployment name. Uh, I, I I'll make it as my website name. Uh, you can make it anything. Uh, it's just uh, a sort of folder name. Uh, networks. So the website I'm hosting over here right now is networks.pk. Uh, the most of the traffic that I would be having on this website would be from US. Indeed, it's a .pk website, but still I'm expecting most of the traffic from US. So that's why I, I, I'm going to create a server on US Central 1A. CPU, uh, you can just select the CPU. You, you'll be, be amazed the number of CPUs that you would be having over here. If you go and just pay for these CPUs, this much computing power, it's too much, dude. You have to pay a lot. So um, I would be just like making it on a small, no, not shared server, uh, one CPU of 3.758 GBs of RAM. It's so damn much, like it's too much. Okay, my email address um, for the administrator of this website would be this. And uh, you can select the um, uh, disk, uh, disk type, like SSD is a preferable, it's fast enough. Uh, 10 GBs of data would be enough for my this website. So everything would be default. Uh, allow HTTPS and allow HTTP traffic both deploying. So here we go. We've got a WordPress installation. 
this is the WordPress admin link. So right now it is on an IP address that is 35184185238. Okay, what is the password for our WordPress main user? This is my WordPress admin password. Username is admin, the default one, the password, login, and here we go. Welcome to our new installation on WordPress Google Click to Deploy. If you so go and visit the website, so it would be welcoming you like on behalf of Google Compute Engine team, WordPress on Google Compute Engine team, just another website. So the basic theme of the uh, of uh, of the WordPress 2019. So now oh, well, we have to do two things. Uh, we have to make this address an external IP address, and then we have to change this address with our domain name, the networks.pk, uh, which I was supposed to configure on this computer engine. So let's get started. So from now here, uh, we'll move to the menu. And in menu, just move down to external IP address. So from here, uh, uh, we've got external IP addresses. Now this one, uh, the this IP address that we've just installed is uh, ephemeral IP address and we have to change it into a static IP address and we just have to name it uh, networks like it's just same like that the, uh, the, the folder name it's uh, not more than that uh, make it any anything uh, reserve so adding static IP address so we've got a static IP address fully dedicated towards our website so now we've got an external IP address, a static IPv4 version. So, uh, now what we have to do, we have to change this IP address with our domain name. So for that, just move down. Before we've, we, we went to, uh, uh, we've configured the external IP address on VPC networks, external IP address now on network services, just go to the cloud domain name servers, cloud DNS. Okay, on cloud DNS, create zones. And uh, what is my zone name? It's simply my domain name, uh, networks.pk. Oh, sorry, just networks, it, it, it's also that. Same thing, just a folder name, nothing else. Now on DNS name, that's my domain name, network.pk, and just create it. So now it will be providing us some domain name servers. These four domain name servers must be, men uh, like, must be added in the domain name servers panel uh, on your domain registrar's setting page. So let's move towards my domain registrar. I've registered this .pk domain with pk and ic. So here is my domain registrar. I log it in. Okay, uh, in my domains, manage domains, just go down to the networks.pk. Just, uh, I'll just select it and uh, I'll modify the name servers. Uh, add a new name, name servers. So uh, it's A2 and I guess the name servers that we have to add are something like B. So add a new name server. So the primary name server would be uh, 
nscloudv1.googledomains.com uh, the first name server okay so and the second name server b2 b3 and b4 four name servers to be added and this is the second name server and this is the third name server and respectively the fourth one so we have just added four domain name servers the name servers that we just created in our uh, network services uh, for the networks.pk add the name server set so I've added the name server set in my account now I have to assign my that particular domain networks.pk the name servers that I've just added as domains so on networks.pk I'll select the domain name and modify the name servers and the name servers are this is the name server that we have to add. update the selected domain name server okay so um, uh, now the name servers for networks.pk networks.pk so uh, yeah it just assigned the name servers so it might gonna take some time 10 to 20 minutes or like uh, in my case pkn i see is the slowest one to change the name servers the, the, the registrar services of changing name servers a bit slow than the other tlds like .com .net .org. so this is the country level domain name uh, domains country level domain registry for the pakistan and it's a bit slow so it might gonna take some time now you've created a domain name server uh, in google cloud platform and we've assigned our uh, domain name the same name servers that we've just added now these are two different things now we've got a name server and a wordpress installation on some server now this server is not connected to our name servers yet let's just connect it add record set and in record set we have to just put this ip for address over here so if you want to create it uh, create your website as www.network.pk so you uh, you can you can write it as like this uh, i just don't want it i uh, i used to make a, uh, a main website web page uh, without www uh, it's um, uh, uh, this is for some other reasons we'll discuss it in some other video uh, well let's create it okay now our wordpress installation is connected to these name servers like this this installation is connected to these name servers and these name servers are simply connected to our domain name registrar so uh, now uh, in our wordpress installation dashboard we just go to the settings and in settings just change the wordpress uh, address url and cite your address url with the domain name that you just assigned it networks dot pk so, yeah we're done save changes okay now this site can't be reached uh, the web page and xyz 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 uh, might be temporarily down or have been moved to a new web address so um, the 
the, the domain name registrar didn't connect my domain name yet. Uh, as I've said it before, it uh, it might would gonna take some time, um, might be thirty minutes, sixty minutes, uh, or it might can take. Um, uh, in my case, uh, with PKNIC, it might gonna take some three to four hours, might be six to eight or ten to twelve hours, but uh, it will gonna update it uh, with with some time uh, while taking taking some time. Uh, let me take it again. No. It didn't uh, update it yet. Uh, let's wait, wait wait for a while. So the website is configured and uh, it accepted our name server changes. So now if I open the IP address that was assigned to our project, it will gonna automatically redirect us to the domain name. Yeah, networks.pk. A VPS is installed and a WordPress website is configured on it. We've created name servers in our Google Cloud Platform. And then we've changed our uh, WordPress installation IP address with our domain name while adding our name servers of the Google Compute Engine in our domain name, domain name registrars name servers. Everything is done, a new website is created. The most easiest way to upload a website or to backup a website is uh, using a WordPress plugin uh, that is all in one WordPress migration. So normally that plugins don't provide you the capability of uploading uh, a website of more than 500 MBs, uh, but we've cracked it. And uh, now um, uh, we can upload any, any type of big website. So uh, we'll just go to the plugins and we'll add a new plugin. So if your website is just small, you can search all-in-one WordPress migration from here. Uh, because my website is big, I'll add my cracked version and I'll upload this plugin. Uh, I'll add that this uh, cracked version in the description of the video. So let's just upload the plugin. All-in-one WordPress migration. Here it is. Install now. And activate the plugin. So here, uh, here is our all in one WordPress migration plugin. So if it is a working website, and if you want to back it up, and if you want to change the, the server, uh, you just have to import the site. Now, maximum upload file size is 48,000 terabytes. So you can just import it using a file option. And it would gonna download uh, all the files, the WordPress installation and the images, the upload folder and the plugins and all the themes, everything would be migrated. Uh, they would provide you a backup of everything. So far, it's the best option to download. I do it manually, but for the guys who don't know PHP and WordPress, um, it's better to do it while using all-in-one WordPress migration. So now we have to Im uh, import the website uh, using a file, and uh, I'll search down the website. Yeah, uh, here is networks.pk. So the website is importing. It, it, it would gonna take some time. So we'll be right back when it's done. Probably. So the website is uh, imported and let's proceed to the next step. 
restoring the files your data has been imported successfully let's see if the site is working or not yeah this was the site so everything is working fine uh now here uh, there there is some bug in um uh, importing a website using uh, all-in-one WordPress migration uh, uh, when you import it for Google Click to deploy. Uh, when you open any of the link or any of the post, it won't gonna work. The requested URL category XYZ is not found. So for that, uh, go to your Google Cloud deployment and open the SSH, uh, open the so Vim and in Vim editor uh, will provide some some access command uh, for Linux to provide permissions for certain folders. So uh, in 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 Vim uh, you would be Entering this command, sudo vi in the directory etc. Apache two slash Apache two dot conf. So uh, when you enter this uh, this file just press the insert button so that it would gonna take you to the added option right now it's just read only mode it's on read only mode so when we press insert it's gonna mm, take us to the edit mode so scroll it down Okay, now these are the files and the permission. So for the third directory, directory slash um, uh, slash var slash www, we have to change permission for this. Just change the allow override none to allow override all. After then, to um, to end up the edit um, option of this file, just press escape and then write colon and w to save it okay xyz file and xyz line and xyz column it's written uh, so now to exit this file just enter colon wq now we have to restart the apache server so for that for that write down the command sudo service apache2 restart that's it exit the vim and let's check if if it's working now or not okay it would not start working um uh, in some moments uh, it's taking time to restart the apache server um uh, till then we we'll just open the we will we'll, uh, open our admin panel and here most of the time the problem that i face face uh, that is of uh, i just forget the password of the last installation uh, and uh, here uh, we're gonna go up with the process of um, recovering the password uh, of your WordPress installation uh, using phpMyAdmin. So now this, this was the old password. It won't gonna work because you've uh, uploaded a new WordPress file and that carries its own password. 
the previous one see it's not working let's just open the php my admin i'll uh, go and search for the php my admin password these are the website credentials uh, this is the mysql root password so um, uh, to enter php my admin just write down slash php my admin after a web address it would want to take you to the php my admin panel and the default uh, username for this installation must be root and this is the password okay this is the database named as wordpress in in this database uh, move down to the table wp users and these are the users uh, for this website uh, okay i'll edit this user and okay So just enter your new password over here. In my case, I'll enter this password. And in in the functions column, just select MD5. I'll copy it down and just save it. And now you're ready to, ready to go. Open your WP admin again. admin and the new password so the password is also changed uh, let's see if uh, if posts are opening and if the server uh, Apache server uh, just restarted and it's fun uh, like it, it provided the uh, permission for the particular directly directory that we're gonna make us that we're gonna make this thing work working so yet it's not restarted uh, there is another option to set this up uh, just go to your permalinks in, in your setting of the wordpress dashboard permalinks and just just save it down and make um, just just don't change anything anything and Click save. Let's see if it's working now or not. Yeah, it's working now. Simply. That's it. We've installed a website. We've transferred the website, the old website, and uh, we've learned how to change the WordPress main user password. If you forget it, if you forget it, and we've learned the easiest way to migrate a website. Uh, finally, this is uh, the free hosting. Thanks for watching. In this video, we would be learning about adding an SSL certificate in your WordPress deployment that we just installed. And for the SSL certificate, we would be using Cloudflare. Cloudflare provides free SSL certificate. To configure that, you just have to create an account on cloudflare.com. I've got an account on cloudflare.com. Let's move towards ad site. In ad site, add your website name, which in my case is network.pk. Next. So uh, we would be going with a free plan.
it automatically detects the external IP address or of our website. Continue it. Now, uh, previously, we added these name servers in our domain registrar panel. The name servers that are that were provided by Google domain name servers. NS Cloud b1.googledomain.com, b2, b3, and b4. So now what it is saying that from these name servers, change them to these name servers in your domain registrar panel. The last two would be deleting and in place of b1 and b2, we have to add cache.ns cloudflare.com leela.ns.cloudflare.com so i'll move towards my domain registrar i've added the name servers before for another domain so i'll get them over here nscloudflare.com and cache.ns and leela.ns update the selected domain Okay, now continue. Networks.pk is now queued up to be reached. Please check back in a few hours. You'll also be notified by email once your site becomes active. Once our site becomes active, they're gonna be sending us an email so till then we'll be right back